Hello everyone, Shriek here, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Before getting started, I'm first going to do some business with the Maku tree over here. Most of all with the Oracle of Secrets over here. <laughs> For Roar. But if I remember correctly, there's also going to be a Gacha Sheet available by this point. And indeed, just like in Oracle of Ages, after a couple of dungeons, more and more of the top of the Maku tree is going to be available. And that way you're going to be able to get some free Gacha Seeds. Always nice. <laughs> But alright, now for the real reason we are here. Let's go talk to Furore, because in the meantime I've actually done the secrets we needed to do for the Master of the Kit that we actually saw on the mill. Needed to do the stupid minecart minigame again, but uh, in the end that did not matter all that much. <laughs> I was able to do it successfully. W. That was the secret I got apparently. And here is the reward from that game, now also available in this game. A unique item, only available through a linked game. We get the Bomb Chew, send them right to your enemies. Returning item from Madras Mask and Ocarina of Time, the Bomb Chew. Similar to bombs, but these can actually move around, making them homing bombs. A very rare item, both in Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. <laughs> Since it can only be gotten through a linked game, through this secret, if you do it in this order. Now, let's go take care of that um, ring that we actually got, now that we're still in uh, Horan Village. And then we can truly get started. Whimsical ring, already have that. <laughs> can be an interesting ring, I know, but um, not for me. Uh, that was everything, I guess. Now, let's return. To where we actually left off last time. Time to head towards the Great Moblin's Fortress. Ah, here's my swimming buddy. Swimming through currents may not be as fun as in Oracle of Ages. <laughs> There's no mermaid suit in this game. That is pretty obvious. But we've got our own mermaid. <laughs> now. Here is actually the entrance to the Great Moblin's Fortress. Let's go take a look. Now entering my domain, Great Moblin. I think it's going to be time to kick him out. <laughs> oh, Dimitri's not able to go over this bridge. Well, in that case, Link will go alone. And stop shooting bombs at Dimitri. <laughs> He's not going to be able to hit him, so it does not matter. Alright, where are you? In this building, I hope? What do we have in here? A couple of regular moblins. Not impressed by your security, great moblin. <laughs> Easily disposed of. So, the pesky kit has come. I won't let you stand up to me anymore. This time, victory will be mine. And this uh, battle is going to look familiar, I guess. Just like an Oracle of Ages, we need to take on the great moblin. This time around, not on Rolling Ridge. But uh, near Sunken City. <laughs> but it works the same. He will actually try to throw big bombs at us. What we need to do is actually throw it back towards him. Yeah. You can't beat me this way. I cannot be defeated as long as I don't drop my bomb behind me and start a fire. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> But yeah, it's pretty obvious we are not able to actually beat him by just hitting him enough times with bombs. What we need to try to do is blow a bomb in such a way that he actually freezes. But we need to time it in such a way that he actually does that the moment he is holding a bomb. And therefore he will actually drop his bomb and blow up the big stack behind him. But that's what we need to do. It can be pretty tricky to do. Oh, it was a close one. <laughs> but not quite. The best trick to use here is just keep on throwing bombs. Yeah, and eventually you will get it, and this will happen. Boom! Ah, ah! How could this child defeat me? Ah! I'll remember this. I shall get my revenge. Again? <laughs> just keep on trying, and I will get you every single time. A reward for this mini quest, a piece of heart. Of course, this is not something we're doing for simple rupees. <laughs> you get a little bit of a better reward for this. 
And we are also going to be able to continue the story with this guy immediately. He's going to move to Sunken City now, so... <laughs> we might actually see him again. The moment we go there again. In fact, that is where we're going to go next. Because we are going to be en route towards Dungeon 4. Sunken City is apparently the place that leads towards Mount Kuko. The place where Dungeon 4 is going to be. And now that we have found the Zora's flippers in there, we're going to be able to reach it. We're heading north. We're saying goodbye to Sunken City. But first we're going to say hello to our newest uh, resident of Sunken City. <laughs> Let's go down towards the empty house. Now somebody's going to be living in here. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Bui. My great lair is in ruins. I have to start over from scratch. But why did this happen to me? Because you're a bad guy. And um, bad guys always get punished. Even now. See this big pile of uh, bombs that's actually in the corner over here? If we actually start a fire over here... We can light this stack of bombs. <laughs> and this house will blow up. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, the great Marblin. The life of being the great Marblin. It has got to be difficult. <laughs> but okay, that is enough playing around. Time for us to actually leave again. One final thing we still need to do. Let's go back towards the Great Moblins Fortress for that. Normally, if you're playing a regular game, this is the point where you indeed want to continue. Don't follow along if you're actually uh, playing this game first. You're planning to do Oracle of Ages as linked. This is only going to be here in a linked game. But the moment the Great Moblin is defeated, in my case, twice. <laughs> but then we actually need to go back towards the ruins of the now former Great Moblins Fortress. <laughs> and we can actually find an NPC over there. Someone who we can actually talk to for another secret in Oracle of Ages. Just return to where the building was. And now a lone Moblin is going to be here. Pretty obvious he's going to be able to give us a secret. Bui. Treeks. I'm no enemy. I heard a rare secret. Do you want to hear it? A rare secret? Ooh. This secret is related to the Tokei people in Lebrina. Understand? Oh yeah, the lizards from Crescent Island. I indeed understand. And this is it. Plus 2 H left D. Right, got it. We're planning a trip to Crescent Island, it looks like. Waste of time. Well, I doubt it's going to be a waste of time. Any excuse I uh, have to go towards the lizard people is uh, never a waste of time, I think. <laughs> but anyway, before going towards the Tokei in a different game, we're first going to go uh, towards another dungeon in this game. <laughs> now we are ready. Even the linked game business out of the way. And it's time for us to actually start looking for the pathway north, up the mountain. A new area here in Holodrum. We did hear there's a route heading towards Mount Kuko in the reef in Sunken City. But there's also a house here. Apparently someone named Ingo lives here. And he appears to be a vase collector. First, let's go take a look at him. Oh, he's got a nice collection. Awesome. We're not going to be able to interact with this uh, Luigi um, wannabe, but... Uh, <laughs> just remember he's here. A vase collector called Ingo. For now, we actually want to swim into the reef. It's pretty obvious that is over here. And all the way at the northernmost tile that we're able to reach, we can actually dive and find a 2D section. Secret passageway towards the mountains. And that is where we need to go. The cheap cheeps are not going to be a problem. At least in Echoes of Wisdom they bother to create unique Zelda fish enemies now. <laughs> and not loaning Mario enemies anymore. <laughs> but anyway, after surfacing, we finally reach Mount Kuko place that has been mentioned multiple times. But now we are here for the dungeon. And of course, to find ourselves another portal to Saprosia, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, the heart piece over here, we're not able to get from here, so not even Summer is able to help us. As you can see, there's no vines growing over here. We need to get that in a different way. And if we head north, we find the vortex of Mount Kuko. Another entrance towards Saprosia. Go away, stupid crow. <laughs> Maybe we are going to be able to get ourselves a new Power of Seasons. It is definitely worth checking out Subrosia every single time we find a new Vortex. Interesting uh, spot to end up. 
surrounded by lava. Let's go see where we are. A bit more to the southwest than the previous areas we've been to. A bit far from the Temple of Seasons, but... Um... Whoa! Hey, what's that? It's so weird! I'll trade you this ore for it. Thanks! Um, we got the fool's ore. But that is no good. Get your feather back. <laughs> hey! I do love how you're able to actually uh, swing this uh, ore around. <laughs> but indeed, it is a completely useless item. It just looks funny. Nothing more. Apparently, this trip to Saprosia is going to be a chase. Those two were hurrying home. I wonder if they found some other weird thing. Oh, this is apparently not the first time they actually got something. <laughs> Let's go bury some treasure. Make sure no one sees us. If anyone does, run. Oh, not this again. <laughs> Another stealth section coming up. They're going to try to bury our feather. And we need to make sure they do not spot us following them. This is clearly going to be a lot trickier than following Rosa the first time we needed to do a stealth section. There it was only one person after all. <laughs> now there's two people who are going to be able to see us. Just remember, they're only going to be able to see you the moment they stare directly at you. So it's indeed a bit easier than you might think, but um, can still be tricky. They do move quite fast, I feel so. <laughs> they can easily surprise you. Now entering the southwestern beach, apparently. That one's gone. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> Stay behind here. Oh! <laughs> Should have known he would come over here. Yeah, there we go. Next section. Oh, I see a soft soil spot. However... Don't dig this one up quite yet. It is going to be empty. <laughs> it is going to be where they will actually bury the feather, but not quite yet. First, they need to go towards the screen to the north. Oh, and I almost got seen over there. <laughs> Let's go dig up some holes. It's not like in Metal Gear where they're going to be, huh? What is that? <laughs> this wasn't here before. <laughs> That's good. Come on. Let's go find some more treasure. And it is indeed going to be necessary to find more treasure because this one is going to be gone in a second. <laughs> Thank you for our feather. Now, let's go return the ore. <laughs> I don't think it works like that. I'm going to keep that with me. <laughs> so, with that uh, little required side quest out of the way... It's time for us to actually return towards the main section of this area. Luckily, these guys aren't here, otherwise they're going to steal it right back from us again. <laughs> time for us to find a way into the temple again. And this time around, we're going to be using a secret passage to actually get into the next tower. But first... Indeed, there's a first. <laughs> we can actually get ourselves a free gacha seat in this house over here. According to my notes, and it seems to be correct. Just lying in this guy's house, a free gacha seat for Link. <laughs> Sorry, dude. This one is mine. We're going to be picking up another one. But that one is going to be in the next passageway. And that is actually down here. This staircase actually leads towards the next tower. Which is going to be the tower that had the um, closed off section. It was not accessible from the main plaza, you might say. <laughs> However, before climbing up, we're first going to climb down. Because like I promised, another free Gasha seat. We'll be able to plant plenty of them. And hopefully one of them is going to grow in a piece of heart. <laughs> so, we are here. The next tower has been reached. This is indeed how we need to go there. Now, let's go see which season this is going to give us. We've got spring, and we've got autumn remaining. Looking at the colors, I would actually suggest spring. But who knows? <laughs> let's talk to the next spirit. I am the spirit of spring. Rock hard buds bloom in spring. It is a season of discovery. To think I can add to the power of the hero with the Triforce symbol. I loan you the power of the spirit of spring.
The rot of seasons has been blessed with a spring dew. Climb atop a stump to call forth spring. And that was all, apparently. <laughs> Shall we move out of here? And see if we can actually open up the next dungeon. I don't think it's going to be a very big secret to say... Spring power is indeed going to be needed in order to reach the dungeon. <laughs> and we're going to be making use of the advice that the spirit of spring actually gave us. Rock hard buds bloom in spring. I wonder what that actually means. We did actually use one of them already in Horon Village. But now we're going to be able to make them all across the world. And this looks inaccessible. We can actually use this pathway to return to the previous section of the Saporosia Village. We were earlier. However, we're not going to be able to cross that big pool of lava quite yet, so... <laughs> that is closed off for us. We're only able to return to this vortex. Back to Mount Kuko, where we're ambushed by crows. <laughs> and now with our new power... Time for us to actually turn this mountain into spring. Not winter, not summer. We want spring. Let's go check out what we can actually do. Let's head east. And meet up with the final animal buddy we were still missing. <laughs> Let's go talk to Moosh. Sniff, sniff. There is a spring banana tree up there. But until the rock flowers bloom in spring, I cannot climb up to it. Can nothing be done? Yeah, we can actually turn it into spring. And then these rock hard buds <laughs> actually turn into flowers, which we can actually cut with our sword. Making these parts accessible. Here we can actually find a flying cuckoo. Flaps when held, otherwise it is dangerous. Awesome little throwback to Link's Awakening yet again. A flying cuckoo. <laughs> Let's go grab him and actually make our way to the top of this mountain. Oh yeah, it works like this. Just tap the A button and we can get higher and higher. Thank you. And he will actually walk down the mountain for some reason. <laughs> But anyway, we are here for the banana tree. It's pretty obvious. Moosh is not going to help us until he's actually fed. He wants this banana. So we need to go get it for him. Oh, oops. <laughs> Give me that rupee. Thank you. Right, vermin taken care of. It's probably not worth going towards this ledge for the bushes. <laughs> I'm just going to lose hearts. Yeah, especially since the game is not going to give me anything. <laughs> it was not worth it. There's no recovery hearts growing in this cave. <laughs> but anyway, once we get the top, we're able to get the spring banana. It sure smells sweet. The perfect snack for a flying bear. <laughs> Let's go give it to him. We need him in order to actually find the key to the dungeon. Before moving down, there's obviously a cave here. So let's go check this one out. Fast moving platform. This is going to require a decent amount of your reaction time. Step off the platform in time in order to hit the switch. This will make a ring drop. In the same way we need to go... Oh! The keys distracted me. <laughs> that is my excuse. <laughs> and that way we can actually pick up another ring. And that is all we can do in here. Let's return to Moosh. Can still do this quickly in this episode, I feel. Right, sir, we are back. Oh, you brought me a spring banana. Is it for me? I happily accept. Mmm, mmm. Ah, so tasty. That was great. I am Moosh. You fed me, so I will help you. I will give you a ride anywhere. Tap the A button to hover. Or hold it to save power for a ground pound. But water is my weakness. The shallow stuff is one thing, but I cannot take the deep water. So, be careful. The next animal buddy. The final one we still haven't seen yet, even though we've picked our animal buddy in the previous game already. <laughs> but Moosh is also still here, and he's going to be able to fly. That is going to be his biggest trait. His biggest downside, of course, being the fact that he's not able to swim at all. So he's the exact opposite of Dimitri in that sense. <laughs> The Deku scrubs that we can actually find in this area think they are actually funny. We're going to have signs that will say no shields. 
think that might actually scare us off. <laughs> Always thought that was funny. But in the end, they are not per se that interesting. What we want to do is actually head further west into the next area. Because in this area, we can actually find the key. Officially, this area is known as Goran Mountain. Also part of the mountain area here in Oracle of Seasons, I feel. But they're technically two different areas, as you can see. Mount Kuko and Goron Mountain are officially different areas. I can float if you tap the A button. If you move as I float, you can actually float across pits. Try it! And it is pretty obviously required. We can actually do uh, pretty interesting stuff with our Pegasus Seeds combined with our Rock's Feather. But this is something only Mush can do. <laughs> and that will actually give us the Dragon Key. Our entrance towards dungeon number four. Right, before closing off, one quick little thing I want to do. And that way we're going to be able to start with the dungeon immediately in the next episode. Let's go towards a cave to the left over here. The second screen of Goron Mountain actually has a cave that we can actually check out. Something we can pick up over here. Right. Sorry, Mush, I'm going to blow you up. <laughs> Let's go through the cave quickly. Staircase. Then we actually move to a higher area on Goron Mountain. And then we need to go in this cave. Or maybe not. <laughs> This was the wrong one. Need to go towards the other one. Ow. Always hate those things. <laughs> now, all the way at the top. Oh, Lionel's help. Allow me to actually quickly go. <laughs> These things actually hurt way too much. And once we go around, we're able to actually jump off the mountain over here. Into a cave we can only reach from here. There's going to be a Goron in here. And it has got to be interesting what he has to say. It's so nice of you to come all the way here just to see me. Since you did, shall I make it so you can actually carry more rings? Awesome. Ring box upgrade. Then let me see your box. Do this here, that there. Okay, I'm done. And we get a bigger ring box. It can now... Hold even more rings. Level 3 already for us. <laughs> awesome. And with that, I think we uh, are done with this episode. Next time, it's time for us to actually check out the Dragon Dungeon here in Oracle of Seasons. Hope to see you then. And hope you enjoyed this episode. Treeks out. Later, folks.